Hello and welcome back to another lesson. Now, one of the common bits of teacher feedback that tends to really confuse a lot of English students is that they are not analyzing enough in their essays. So often a lot of students, even the students that I tend to tutor and help, tend to say, okay, miss, I have literally answered the question directly. I've selected a quotation. I've even mentioned, for example, the writer has used a metaphor. They've used a simile, they've used alliteration. Yet my teacher is saying, I'm not analyzing enough. I'm completely stumped. I don't know where I'm going wrong. This is a really, really common issue that a lot of students face. And of course, if you're facing it yourself, you're not alone. So what I want to show you guys is how to effectively analyze any quotation in any English essay using just three simple steps. Now, with these steps, what I don't want you to confuse these steps for is the entire paragraph structure, okay? When it comes to shaping your English essays and, you know, using whichever paragraph structure that you like. So for example, my preferred paragraph method is the pill paragraph structure, which I think is perfect, okay? Starting off with the point, evidence, explanation, and then links. So if you use that, then this goes into the second E of your pill paragraph, the explanation. However, if you use pretzel, if you use peel, if you use petal, et cetera, et cetera, in the explanation part of your paragraph, this is where you now add those three steps when analyzing your selected quotation, okay? So what I want to show you guys now is I'm gonna walk you through the three steps, the three really simple steps you need to take when you're analyzing quotations in your essays. And then I'm gonna present you guys with two examples taken from just two random plays. But these examples literally are just kind of to illustrate how I've applied those three steps. These steps can be used for any essay, either, you know, if you're given an unseen language extract or a fiction extract, a nonfiction extract, a play, a novel, whatever, literally you can use these three steps for any text that you are presented with. But I'm just giving two random examples, one taken from Macbeth, the play by Shakespeare, and one taken from an inspector calls by Priestley, okay? But these, these three steps can literally be applied to any extract that you are analyzing, okay? So let's begin by going over the three steps to effectively analyzing any quote within your English essay. Now remember that step number one, when you're analyzing any quotation in your English essay is begin by mentioning the technique. And often a lot of students kind of do this and then stop there before they move on to then start yet another paragraph, okay? However, starting off your quotation, so I'm assuming already that you've selected the quotation, right? So of course, for example, you're writing your pill paragraph. You open by, with your point answering the question, then you select the quotation. Now, after you select the quotation, this is the first thing that you need to do, but you don't stop there, okay? So you first begin by selecting and identifying a technique, mentioning the effect it has on the quote as a whole. What I mean by that is, when you select the quotation and then you identify whether the writer has used a metaphor, a simile, alliteration, personification, whatever, that's great, but you don't stop there because that means you're stopping in just this point and you're kind of, your analysis is very shallow, okay? So mentioning the technique and talking about how this technique is really powerful in you know, conveying a certain image or conveying whatever it is that's happening within the text, that's great, but that's still just a little bit of analysis. Then you need to then do a bit more of a deep dive in step number two, where when you look at the quotation that you've selected, you've picked out the technique, then zoom in just a little bit more, pick out a word from the same quotation, label that word, and then mention how it suggests or it connotes a certain image or a certain effect or whatever. What I mean by that is, let's say for example, you select a quotation which uses a form of metaphor. Then you look at that same quotation and then say you find the word red within that quotation. And then you want to now zoom in. So you label the red, which is describing a noun as an adjective. So you mentioned, for example, you know, the writer uses this really powerful adjective, which connotes, which indirectly suggests danger, blood, fear, okay? So when you're mentioning how it connotes something or how it paints an image in our minds, this is now where you're going one layer uh, level or one, one level deeper when you're analyzing, okay? So you start off by talking about the technique, you know, the general metaphor, whatever. But now when you zoom in and then you're talking about, okay, what does this paint in our minds? What does this noun, what does this verb, what does this adjective, whatever do in terms of suggesting something to us, you're now stepping one level in when you're analyzing the effect. And then step number three, so you don't stop there, 
you then mention and evaluate what effect you think the writer wanted to have on the reader or the audience okay so when you pick up the quotation you mention it's a metaphor i.e you then mention and find that there's an adjective say red which connotes blood or danger or whatever then you then think the effect that the writer may have had is perhaps the writer wanted you as the reader or the audience to feel a sense of fear maybe the author wants you to foreshadow to predict something that the reader might remember later on in the novel whatever it is you then think and suggest okay the author has done this because i think this is the effect they wanted to have on the reader okay so those are three steps now as I said, I'm going to give you guys two random examples just to show you how you can apply these steps when you're analyzing a quotation. The first is taken from Macbeth. Again, you don't need to have context. For example, if you haven't studied Macbeth, this is just more an illustrative example of how you can apply it. Okay. So the question is, how does Shakespeare present ambition, which is one of the key words in the question and the quotation of selected, which I then will then apply these steps is Within the play, Macbeth of selected vaulting ambition which overleaps itself. That's the quotation of selected. Now, when I'm going through the analysis, right, so this is I've selected my quotation, I would begin by mentioning the technique. So, for example, the entire quote, the author or the playwright Shakespeare uses personification here to illustrate how the speaker, in this case Macbeth, is really frightened of the great ambition he has. He uses this personification to illustrate how ambition is almost tripping over itself because it can't handle the weight of, in this case, the crown, okay? That's step number one, but I don't stop there. Then I then zoom in and I pick one particular word. And in this case, when I'm looking at this quotation, I think the adjective vaulting, which describes ambition, is really powerful again what this is doing is it's connoting how this ambition is way too vast way too great for the speaker Macbeth to handle but then I don't stop there I then mention when it comes to Shakespeare's intent for his audience I will then perhaps mention that Shakespeare wants to illustrate how ambition can be quite a frightening thing to hold and to have, okay? And what maybe Shakespeare is trying to intend for his audience to think about is maybe it's not a great idea to be ambitious because if you then get what you want, maybe you're not gonna be able to handle the power that comes with it, okay? So that's my first example. However, the other example I want to show you is taken from a play called An Inspector Calls, okay? And the question being, how does Brucey present social responsibility? Again, you don't need to be familiar with this play. I'm just going to walk you guys through how you can apply these three steps. So the quotation of selected taken from this play is uttered by or is said by a character called Inspector Gore. And this character says, we are members of one body. So I then begin, I would, if I were writing about this and talking about social responsibility, the idea that we need to look after each other, especially we need to look after people who are weaker or poorer than us, I would begin with this quotation and mentioning the overall effect and the technique of the uh, that's used in the overall quotation. So in this case, the technique that's used is a metaphor. Then when I'm looking at this metaphor, of course, what I would mention is the idea that perhaps the playwright is conveying the message to his audience that we all have some kind of duty to look after each other through this metaphor. However, when I then go one step further in, I would probably pick out this one word, body, which is a noun. And now here, the, this noun, what it connotes, the suggestion that it has, is this notion that we're all tied together. When we do one thing to each other, actually everyone else is affected, right? We can't just ignore our duties to each other, for example, right? So that would be the additional layer of analysis I would do. And the third step, of course, is when I then evaluate Priestley's intent for his audience, maybe what I'd then talk about is arguably Priestley uses this metaphor to convey to his listeners and his audience that they need to reflect on how they treat other people in society. So once they've finished watching this play and they go away with his imparting message, right? So the message behind this play, he may be intense for his audience to think about perhaps how they maybe have in the past ignored their social responsibility to other people, right? Again, that's an interpretation and some form of evaluation I'm doing, which is not directly implied in this quotation, but that's now where the power of analysis comes in and that's what your English teachers want to see, okay? So that's really it when it comes to how to effectively analyze any quotation in your English essays. Make sure you follow these three steps 
and you will find that your teachers will absolutely love your analysis and this is how you do the deep dive this is how you go deep when you take one quotation and then you really unpack it when you're analyzing in your english essays thank you so much for listening